Welcome to an M365.video SharePoint short. My name is David Warner. Today we're going to talk about an introduction to column formatting. Now column formatting is a feature that came to SharePoint Online late 2017. Very powerful, gives you the opportunity to update the look, the style, to some degree the functionality of your site column data within a list or a library. Now it doesn't quite get the publicity of a SharePoint framework web part or extension, but it's very powerful and it's very easy to implement. You don't have to compile or transpile any apps or install them. So we're going to answer a few questions in this introductory video. The first, what is column formatting? Next, how can column formatting be used? Where can you apply column formatting? And how does column formatting compare? There's a few options within SharePoint that we can use to format our columns. We're going to compare them, see how they stack up, see what the benefits are when compared to one another. I'll provide you with some useful links. And then we'll take a look at the preview of what's going to be included in the next video for this series of uh, videos within this topic. Now, what is column formatting? So column formatting allows you to use JSON, JavaScript object notation, uh, to customize how SharePoint site columns are displayed in lists, libraries, and web parts. So what I've got here is um, three different examples of, of how column formatting has been used. Um, not by any means uh, here to show you all of the examples. This is three that kind of cover the spectrum from, from simple to a little bit more complex. Um, and again, you can do way more than what you can just do in these three examples. This is really just meant to provide you a, a kind of taste uh, to what can be done. So if we look here in the first example, we've got some styling enhancements. So we were able to update the look and feel of the content in the HTML. Uh, we can see based on the content uh, values of a single column, we were able to change the actual styling uh, put an icon next to the name of the content um, or next to the actual content, uh, put a background color, and that's all dynamic and uh, based on the content that's in that singular column. Now the next the next one has some numeric calculations. So there's a couple things going on here. Um, you see that we're able to perform some mathematical calculations, but not just based on the, the singular column. This after column is where the actual column formatting enhancements has been applied, but we're able to utilize the content in the column next to it, right? So um, we were able to take the value of before, uh, compare it to the value in after, <clears throat> and show whether or not it went up, went down, use an icon to show that, show the difference. So you can see we can use the value that's there in the actual column where the column formatting is being applied right here and after. Um, but we're able to use the values of other columns within the same row uh, to perform that calculation. And then the last example, um, I call it like API-like imports. So we're able to consume data from other sites or services um, that allow us to provide repeatable patterns for, for extracting that data. So in this case, we're taking a Twitter username and we're sending that request in a repeatable URL that then returns the Twitter picture, right? So we're able to send out the URI or the URL that requests the uh, Twitter picture based on the ID um, and the cool thing there is all this data is stored in the Twitter service, not in SharePoint. We're not actually storing it in SharePoint. So if I were to update my image there, um, we're going to go ahead and see the newest image. We're not having to store the data in SharePoint or, or anything like that. Now, where can you apply column formatting? So there's two uh, primary areas, um, obviously in site columns at the site collection or web level. So you can apply it at the site collection um, for that site column, you would go in, edit the site column within the site collection, and then any list that uses that site column will inherit the experience or the column formatting um, uh, JSON that you've uh, added to that site column. Um, and so everywhere you create a new list, you add that site column or you associate it to a content type, will inherit that, that column formatting experience. Now you may use generically named site columns, right, that are used for a variety of purposes and uh, depending on what content type or list they're used in, it's, its use case is different. Uh, in that case, you can actually go directly to the list column itself within the list. You can scope the column formatting experience to be used specifically within that list. So you would go in, you would edit the list, you'd add the column in the list, and you'd add the JSON to the site column within that list, and then only that list will inherit the experience being defined by, by the column formatting. So you have two options there that you can apply that column formatting. Now, how does it compare to other uh, column formatting or column experience options? So these are the three that I feel are the most popular. Uh, we'll kind of talk through them uh, row by row. Um, the first one here is JS Link. Uh, we see 
It's not available in the modern experience. Um, it is available in classic. Um, there is no SharePoint framework development required for it. Obviously, it only works in classic. JavaScript is required, and it provides a level of full control. So you can see over here on the right, uh, we have full control over the experience. And that includes the editing experience. So if you wanted to create a wizard, for example, like I've created an iconography wizard that allows users to choose the icons via pointing and clicking, and then I just take that content through JavaScript, save it into a single line of text field uh, in that side column, and, and the client never knows the difference user never knows the difference. Um, so you do have true full control over the entire experience from view to edit to display, etc. The second option here is a SharePoint framework field customizer extension. Now this is obviously modern experience, not available in classic. Uh, yes, SharePoint framework development is required. It is a SharePoint framework extension. Um, so, so yes, it, it, it is required. JavaScript required, yes-ish. Uh, JavaScript, TypeScript, you know, in the end, uh, SharePoint um, solution gets transpiled down into JavaScript. So, so yes, it's using JavaScript uh, or TypeScript or however it is that you build it within the extension. Uh, but yeah, it's using, it's using JavaScript when, when all is said and done. And, and yes, it provides you full control with an asterisk. So we don't have control over the editing experience like we did with JS Link. Uh, but you, you, you know, you're able to create functions and methods um, and an execution model within JavaScript or TypeScript that gives you a, a level of full control um, over your field customizer for the, for the view. Now let's talk about column formatting, because uh, that's really what we're here to do. Column formatting, um, yes, it's available in modern. No, it's not available in classic. The execution of it is not available in classic. So if you have a classic site, you can go into your site column, uh, you can edit, you'll see a section to edit column formatting and add the JSON. Uh, but it won't actually execute that JSON or, or provide that level of uh, column formatting experience when you go look at the list in a classic view. If you swap that list or library over to the modern experience, that's where you'll see it actually being invoked and applied. Um, no, there's no SharePoint framework development required. Um, that's nice because not everyone has access to deploy uh, a SharePoint framework solution into the app catalog or the authority to approve the installation of an app uh, into the app catalog, which is required for SharePoint Framework solutions, whether it be a web part or an extension. So you just edit the site column directly, as I mentioned before, either at the site collection level or the list level. So it, it gives you a lot of flexibility, uh, empowers a lot of um, non-development users. No JavaScript is not required. Uh, you do use JSON. Some would argue that's a, a flavor of JavaScript, but you're not writing actual functions and methods, classes, etc. And no, it doesn't provide full control. There is a, a JSON schema um, that we're utilizing to, to provide the overriding experience, right? Whether it's uh, the styling differences or the numeric calculations or the API-like imports of, of content, as I mentioned before. Um, don't let all those no scare you, though. It is extremely powerful. It, it doesn't get a lot of press. It hasn't been highly publicized like some of the other features and functionalities that have come out recently, but it is extremely powerful. And, and we're gonna look at a few ways in which we can do that over the course of the next uh, few videos on this topic. Uh, here are some useful links. Column formatting documentation. Um, all these links will be active in a slide share or I'll include them in the blog post where uh, this, this video is located on my website. Um, it's a pretty long, pretty long URL there to, to utilize uh, and pull off right now. So don't worry about trying to note that down, it'll be available. Um, that's the documentation. There are GitHub samples that you can use. Um, and so I encourage that. Chris Kent has made a web part that allows you to walk through a wizard uh, in creating your JSON for your uh, column formatting uh, enhancements. Really encourage taking a look at that. It is a SharePoint framework web part. Um, so you have to have the authority to install that. If you don't though, it's not necessary. It's not required. You're still able to do a lot as you'll see through the videos um, and we'll, uh, We'll show you how to utilize that in a future video as well. Next video is gonna cover column formatting and getting started. So we're gonna see some of those existing samples I mentioned in the GitHub. Uh, we'll see how to use the column formatter web part from Chris. Again, a tons of props to him. It's an extremely powerful, very cool web part. Um, but if you're not able to utilize either of those, we're still gonna show how to get started with just VS Code, um, making a schema reference and, and uh, to, the, to the schema for the JSON allows you to use IntelliSense um, and you'll see how that works. So, uh, look forward to seeing you in the next video. Uh, please take a look at m365.video or warner.digital. And I look forward to uh, seeing you there. Thanks for taking the time.